Hi, I'm Bob. This is Chapter One of Labor Economics. I use Peirce Labor Economics as the textbook. In the first part of Chapter One, I will first introduce some basic definitions. Then we will take a look the evolution of labor force participation rate for women in the U.S. I will show you how to collect data. And draw the trend of labor force participation rate using data. Last, I will derive the labor supply from the consumption leisure trade-off model. First, let's look at some basic definitions. The labor force is made up of all persons who are either employed or looking for a job, which means. The labor force is the sum of the employed and the unemployed. The unemployed are the people who are without a job, but they are available for work, and they are actively seeking for work. The labor force participation rate is defined as the ratio of the labor force to the working age population. The employment rate is the ratio of the number of employed people to the working age population, and the unemployment rate is the ratio of the number of unemployed people to the labor force. So the sum of the employment and unemployment rates is not equal to one, and the labor force participation rate is not the sum. Of the employment and unemployment rates, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the civilian labor force participation rate in August 2021 is 61.7 percent. The employment rate, the employment population ratio, is 58.5 percent, and the civilian unemployment rate is five. Point two percent. In the test books, you can see a lot of graphs, and you can also collect data by yourself and draw those curves by yourself. We you can use the current population survey data to draw a labor force participation rate for women in the U.S. We first go to the IPMS website and choose CPS. Click. Get data. Choose person. The core data, and then work. Then you can find a variable, the labor force participation, which is a category variable, and you choose it. We also need other variables, so we choose person, core data, and demographics. We need the age, gender. Variables, and also select a sample. Work years. We are looking at, so we can choose all the years from 1960s to 2020. And notice that they have the month observations, but we don't need it. We only need the years observations. And submit the sample selections. Then we view the chart, and all the variables are here. Some other variables are automatically selected. DTA is a data format, and we can also describe our data set. The CPS for the labor force participation, and then submit. And after a while, the data set it will be available to be downloaded.
In Stata, we can open the dataset. First, we can use the tab command to take a look at the variable labor force participation. We can recode the labor force variable to make it a dummy variable. We can use tab command to take a look at the gender. We keep the observations for the women because we want to draw a curve for the labor force participation rates for women. And we also keep data for the women who are above 14 years old. Then we use the collapse command to calculate each year's labor force participation rate for women. We use the scatter command to draw the graphs. Let's derive the labor supply from the individual's consumption leisure trade-off model. An individual maximizes her utility, which is a function of consumption and leisure, subject to the budget constraint. The effect of a wage increase can be decomposed into the substitution effect and the income effect. From E1 to E star is the substitution effect, which is caused by the increase of the opportunity cost of leisure or the price of leisure, which is the wage rate. Since the opportunity cost of leisure increases, the consumer will consume less leisure and work more. The income effect is from E star to E2. An increase in wage makes you richer and can consume more leisure. If leisure is a normal good, it makes you work less. The substitution effect and the income effect of a wage increase move in opposite directions. If the substitution effect dominates the income effect, as is shown in the graph, the individual will work more. If the income effect dominates the substitution effect, the individual will work less. That is why a backward bending labor supply curve is possible. When wage rate is low, an increase in wage rate causes an increase in labor supply. When the wage rate is extremely high, an increase in wage rate leads to 
a decrease in labor supply. The effect of imposing a marginal tax rate is to rotate the budget line inverse. Hours of work reduce as the effective wage decreases when substitution fat dominates the income effect. When the marginal income tax rate increases, the change of the income tax revenue is uncertain. The first term is positive, while the second term is negative if a lower effective wage rate will lower the hours of work. And this is the end of the first part of chapter 1. Thank you for watching.